Today I'm revealing six super useful tips for digital organization in Notion. They're all easy to implement and they will really help you to organize your digital life. If you've ever felt overwhelmed by Notion, then this video is for you. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to learn more Notion tips and tricks. So I'm actually gonna be using my second brain template as an example for parts of this video. So I did just want to briefly introduce it to you before we get started. So a second brain is one of the best ways to organize your tasks, notes, projects, and goals within Notion. It's based on productivity methods that actually work. Now, I spent a lot of time putting this together to make sure it's as useful and productive as it can be. It features a task manager that creates a schedule for you, an advanced note-taking system, as well as tons of other awesome features, many of which are automatic. I'll be showing you more of the template throughout the video, but if you do want to grab it for yourself, then it is available on my store and you'll find a link in the description box below. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's jump into the video. Tip number one is using tagging to easily organize your notes and files. Now, a lot of people use Notion for note-taking and planning, and one mistake that I often see people making is creating a new page every time they want to create a new note. This quickly becomes disorganized and it's difficult to find what you're looking for. A better way would be to create one notes database for all of your notes and then use tags to categorize them. So this is the notes page in my second brain. So I have this section down here where it shows all of my recent notes and all of my recent web clips. So they're the ones that have URLs associated with them. And as you can see here, I've associated a tag with every single one of my notes so I can easily see which area it relates to. And if I ever need to find any of my notes related to each tag, I can simply search up here. So let's say that I want to find all of my notes that are related to YouTube. I can type it in here and they will all come up as you can see. And I have also created a page dedicated to YouTube that will bring up these notes as well. So let me just quickly show you that. It's one of my life zone pages. So these are all of my different life zones. So essentially just the different areas of my life. And I've set these up kind of like tags. So if I click on YouTube as an example, this page will bring up any projects and goals that I have related to YouTube. And here all of my notes and web clips that are related to the tag of YouTube. Now, as you can imagine, this is quite an advanced system, but I'll quickly show you how you can set up a really simple notes database. It's gonna take literally a minute and you can get started with this system straight away. So to set up the database, we're just going to type forward slash database and select database in line. And I'll just call this one note database. I'm also just going to hide the title to keep it clean. So you can just click on here and hide the title. Now this column here is where you're going to actually write the title of the note. So let me just add a few in here as an example. Maybe I want to note down a chocolate chip cookie recipe. And you'll notice that Notion has automatically added this default tags column. So what you can do is actually type your tags in here. So for this one, let's say that it's a recipe. And if I just hit enter, it's going to add that as a tag option. Now you can actually add multiple tags if it fits under another category as well. Feel free to add multiple tags here. And let's now add another Another one, let's say that I want to make some notes on formulas in Notion and I'd give this one a tag of Notion like this. So I've just added a few more notes here as an example. So this is the simple note-taking database set up. It's really quick and easy. So if you want to actually add your notes, you can simply just hover up here, click this open button and it'll open up a page for this note and you can actually write the recipe, for example, in here. You can then close it off and it's really easy to see all of your notes in one place. Now, if you ever want to search by your tags, you can either use the search bar here. So say I want to see just my Notion notes. I could type in Notion and it would bring up any that are tagged as Notion. You could also add a filter if you wanted to. So, so if I click on filter and then on tags, it will allow me to select which tag I want to filter by. So let's say I just want to see my recipes. I can add that filter like this. So it's really easy to sort and organize your notes using tags. I do actually have another video on my channel where I show you how to make a more advanced note-taking system. So if you want to take this to the next level, then check out that video. I will link it below. Tip number two is using subtasks. Now, this has actually been a feature of Notion for a while, but still many people don't realize it's there. So let's say that you have a database that you're using as a to-do list like this one. I've just set up this quick little to-do list database just now. So Notion will actually allow you to add subtasks to the tasks within this database. Now to switch on this feature, you can click on the three dots up here, select sub items, and you want to click turn sub items on. So as you can see, we can now add subtasks and these are automatically connected to the parent tasks. So let's add one, for example, to this right blog post. So if I open this up, I can click on here to add a subtask. So let's say I need to plan the outline and you can also fill out the date for this as well. I can add another one. Let's do write first draft. And interestingly, you can actually 
add subtasks under other subtasks. So if I wanted to break this right first draft down even further, I could open up this toggle and add a sub item for this sub item. So let's just add one in here like this. So as you can see, you can have as many layers as you like, and you can easily just open and close the toggles to view or not view the subtasks. And there are actually many different view settings for the subtasks as well. So we currently have it on this toggle view, but if you click on here and go back into the sub items, you can actually select here how you want it to show. So we've currently got it as nested in toggle. You can go for parents only where it will show you just the parent tasks. It will indicate here that there are subtasks associated with this one. You can also go for flattened list and that will put all of the items within a list like this. But here it will indicate if this is related to a parent task. I personally think the toggle is the easiest one to use, but it's completely up to you. Tip number three is to sort your databases, ensuring the most useful information is easily found. Now, I'm sure you're aware that you can add a sort to your databases, but one thing I've noticed is that many people aren't using this feature to its full capacity. So firstly, you need to look at the database in question to decide what is the most useful way to sort this information. Now for a task list like this, it's probably based on the due date, but for note databases, it's probably by the most used notes. Let's start with the task list example. So I'll show you the sort that I have set up on here. Now I actually use an advanced sort on my task database and not many people know that you can actually add secondary sorts in Notion. So for this database, the primary sort is by due date so that the oldest tasks are showing at the top of the list. And I've also added a secondary sort based on the priority so that the tasks are also sorted from highest priority to lowest. Now this is super useful because throughout the day I can now easily work my way down the task list tackling the most important tasks first. Now for my notes databases, I'm actually sorting them based on the last edited time, which is this property here. And that means that the notes that I've most recently created or most recently edited are gonna show at the top of the list. Now this is super useful because ideally you want to be able to access your most important notes that you use all the time really easily. So they should display here right at the top of the list. Now I'm just heading back to that little note database example that I showed you earlier, just to show you how you can add a sort based on the last edited time. So firstly, you'll need to add a property for the last edited time. So I'm just going to click on the plus symbol and the one you want to select is this last edited time here. And that is going to do as it sounds. It's just going to pull through the last time that you edited this page. And then you can simply just add a sort based on the last edited time and you want to set it to descending so that the most recently edited notes display at the top of the list. Tip number four is setting up multiple views of the same database. Now I'd actually recommend setting up different views for different needs rather than trying to put it all into one view. So let's Let's take a look at my task manager page once again so that I can show you what I mean. Now as you can see I have three different tabs here on this database. So the first tab is showing all of my current and upcoming tasks. The next tab here is the overdue tab so that's just showing all of my overdue tasks as you can see. And the third tab is the tasks that I don't currently have a specific deadline for so they tend to be less important tasks that I want to get around to at some point but they're not urgent so I haven't set a deadline. Now having all of this data on just one tab would have made this database overly complicated and difficult to use, which is why I've separated the different task types onto different tabs. And it's now really easy to find what I'm looking for. I have also set up another alternate view just below with the calendar. So it's just another way to view the exact same information. Now, all of these different views are all part of the same database, but I've just set up an alternate view, but they do all update together. So if you ever want to add an alternate view to one of your databases, you can simply just click on the plus symbol here to add a new view. So you can just click on the exact same database and you can just select a new view type. Now tip number five is adding a favoriting system to your databases. Now this works particularly well for note databases but I have also utilized this technique for other database types like recipe databases. Now the idea here is that you can simply favorite the pages within a database that you use most often so that you can easily find them. Now I've actually set up this system as you can see in my second brain. It's actually super easy to set up a favoriting system like this and it only requires adding a single property. So all you need to do if I just open up this one as an example. So all you need to do is add a checkbox property like this to your notes database called favorite and then you can then check it if it is one of your favorite notes. So back on the notes example that I've been using throughout the video. So what you're going to do is click on the plus symbol and select 
the checkbox property and I'm just going to name this one favorite. You can then check the checkbox for any of the notes that you want to favorite. You can then add an alternate view and then add a filter for your checkbox. So if I just click on this page here and duplicate it, I'm just going to click on here and rename the tab. And then we can also click on here and add a filter. So we only see items where the favorite checkbox is checked. And therefore we've now set up a separate view just for your favorite notes. So you can have an all notes view and then just a favorites view. Tip number six is adding a menu to every single page within your Notion workspace so that you can easily navigate between different pages. So I actually added this menu to my second brain and honestly it's made using Notion 10 times easier. I can always navigate to a single page like this with just a single click rather than having to click around for ages trying to find it and because I've pasted it onto every single page I can easily just jump around between the different pages. So it's actually really quick and easy to add a menu so all I'm going to do is just grab a call out block so if you just type in forward slash call out and I'm just going to name this menu. Then just underneath here I'm going to name all of the pages that I actually want in my menu. So for example it might be a book tracker, recipe tracker, so on whatever pages you want in your menu. I'm then just going to highlight all of these like this and then just click on the six dots here and drag and just drop them here just underneath the word menu. Let's just hover over here and just make that bold as well and you can also add a divider in here so I'm actually just going to hit enter type three dashes in a row and it's just gonna add a divider. I'll just get rid of that space. Now all you need to do is just add the link. So if I just highlight this, I can click on the link option here and you can then search for your book tracker. So it's already pulling through my book tracker and I'll just do that for each of these. And one other thing that I'd recommend doing is actually turning this into a synced block. So to do that, you can click on the six dots here and select turn into and turn it into a synced block. And you'll know it's a synced block when it has this red outline around it. Next, what you want to do is copy and paste this block onto every single page that you want your menu to display on. So on this page, I'm actually just going to add two columns. So if I just type in forward slash 2C, select two columns. Let's put our menu in this column and this table over here. And if you just hover around in the middle, you can actually just drag the column to make it smaller. And as I said, you'll want to also copy and paste this block onto all of the different pages within your tracker. Now, the super useful thing about this being a synced block is that when you update one, it will update every single one. So you can copy and paste this onto every single page that you use the most. So if there was another page that you set up, let's say a notes database, and you wanted to add that in, you could just add that in to one of the blocks and that would then update on every single one. And that's it. Those are all of my tips for digital organization in Notion. And if you're interested at all in the second brain template that I've been using throughout this video, then it is available on my store and I'll leave a link in the description box below. And if you did find the video useful, then I would really appreciate if you could give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as I upload new Notion tutorials like this one every single week.